Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. Not just two numbers that are ordinary, but very special numbers. We have pi over 5, which is an irrational number, at the same time a transcendental number, which means it can't be the solution for a polynomial equation with integer coefficients. And we have another irrational number, that's algebraic, which means it's not transcendental. That is the root 5 minus 1 over 2. Some of you will probably recognize the second number in the context of golden ratio. Is this number the golden ratio or is the golden ratio a little different? But how is this related to the golden ratio? Those are good questions. So how do you compare two different kinds of numbers? When we have two exponentials like 2 to the power 75 and let's just say 3 to the power 56, you can use powers of 2 and 3. Uh, to compare them because you know you can work with the rules of exponents very easily pretty much most of the time or sometimes you can use the binomial theorem you know uh, just to write the look at looking at the quotient of the numbers the ratio and so on and so forth but we, in this case we have to use a very special approach because we are dealing with very different categories here right like i said earlier pi over five is a transcendental number but every time you see pi what are you thinking about where does pi come from i mean how did they discover pi in the first place what is pi right well it's the circumference divided by the diameter right that's how greeks discovered uh, the pi many years ago so pi has to do with circles that's why we're going to use a circle not just the whole circle but maybe a portion of the circle, which I call the unit circle. What is the unit circle? The unit circle is basically a circle that's given by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 in the coordinate plane, a circle whose radius is 1 and the center is at the origin. Make sense? Pretty simple, right? Now, one thing that's nice about the unit circle is that since the radius is always 1, because that's a circle, right? The Any point on the circle you choose is going to be one unit away from the origin, which is a good thing. And of course, we can use the unit circle to define the trigonometric functions of any angle. That's the good thing about it, because normally we would define trigonometry on a right triangle, but right triangle has some limitations. For example, you cannot have a non-right angle that is greater than 90, because that would be, first of all, obtuse. You can't have a right angle and an obtuse angle. You can only have a single obtuse angle in a triangle, and that will be something like this, in which case you would not have a right triangle, right? One thing you can do, though, is for angles between 90 and 180, which are obtuse angles, you can look at the supplement of the angle, and you could probably go off of that. But what about something like 315 degrees? or 300 degrees, right? Those are even greater than 180 or 210 or 235, whatever. So for those, we do need the unit circle and the unit circle has four quadrants, uh, which gives you zero to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to two, so on and so forth. Anyways, enough about unit circle, let's get to work. So we have this equation for the unit circle, which means it's centered at zero, zero and radius is one. So how do we use that? Uh, to help us with our problem. First of all, notice that root 5 minus 1 over 2, hopefully you do recognize that from uh, an angle, uh, and pi over 5 in degrees gives you 36 degrees. Okay, first of all, let's establish that, okay, this is 36 degrees. But what does this have to do with 36 degrees? That's what we're going to talk about, okay? So first of all, I have this diagram already made for you, and this angle is pi over 5 degrees. It's exactly pi over 5 degrees, by the way, because I made it that way. So I measured it. It's not, it's drawn to scale, okay, sort of. And uh, I pick a point, obviously, this determines an exact point on the unit circle. So that person, uh, that point, not person, is unique. And then I dropped a perpendicular, which is also creates a unique point on the x-axis, right? which gives us the cosine, by the way. So quick info about uh, the unit circle. If you have the unit circle and an angle, the x-coordinate of the point formed by the angle or formed by, by intersecting the unit circle, uh, that point, uh, the x-coordinate gives you the cosine and y-coordinate gives you the sine. So if this is alpha, x equal, equals cosine alpha and y equals sine alpha. You can always verify this because the hypotenuse is one but again, this allows you to look at 
negative sines and cosines in different quadrants. Okay, but all, most of the time they use uh, quadrant one for demonstration purposes because it's the easiest to understand. Everything is positive. Everything behaves well. All right, cool. So where do we go from here? First of all, notice that we could probably maybe name these uh, vertices something so that we can refer to them as needed. Let's say O is the origin and A, B, C are given as follows. Those are the points. Now, how do you find O, B? O, A, A, B, B, C. Those are the types of questions we're going to talk about, okay? So to be able to compare, we're going to be comparing two pieces here. But let's go ahead and establish what all the lengths first. O, A is 1 because it's the radius of the unit circle. You got that, right? And what about O, B? I just told you x coordinate is the cosine. So O, B is just going to be cosine of pi over 5. Beautiful. And if you call this h, h is going to be, which is ab, by the way, ab is h, which is sine of pi over 5. Beautiful. And then what about bc? Good question, right? oc is 1 because it's another radius, right? It's just another, you see? It's important to know that um, c is on the circle so that oc is a radius. oc is 1. And to find bc, you're going to subtract from oc we're going to subtract OB. But we know that OB is cosine pi over 5. So BC, by the way, I can name BC something, maybe call it T. So BC, which is T, is going to equal OC minus OB, which is 1 minus cosine pi over 5. Nice. So I know T, I know H. Let's go ahead and kind of circle them or box them. And the reason why I use letters instead of the B, C, A, C, D, C stuff is because it's easier. Uh, I'm going to use some theorems here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is find A, C. How do you find A, C? And let's call that something as well. How about U? Okay, A, C is U. U is A, C. You are A, C. You're not A, C. U is A, C. So H squared plus t squared is u squared because notice that this is a right triangle right i'm shading it and the pythagorean theorem applies of course it applies to ob and ab as well but oh by the way this can be called x and h i can actually i don't know why i called it h we could call that y okay anyways let me change it to y because that's the y coordinate anyways uh, so i'm going to change the h to y if I don't erase everything, this is y, right? And h will be y. So this will be y squared. Yeah, I was able to erase the h only. Cool, cool. Now, we know u squared equals that. Let's go ahead and plug it in. What is u squared? y squared, y is sine pi over 5. So sine squared pi over 5 plus t squared. And t is 1 minus cosine pi over 5. Interesting, right? Okay, great. Now, where do we go from here? We can kind of expand it. Let's do it. Sine squared pi over 5 plus 1 minus 2 cosine pi over 5 plus cosine squared pi over 5. Notice that this plus this is equal to 1 because sine squared plus cosine squared is always 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. This will be 2 minus 2 times cosine pi over 5. Now I'm going to view the value of cosine of pi over 5 so we can evaluate u from here numerically. But normally, this is something you can evaluate. By the way, uh, cosine uh, 36 and cosine 37 are conjugates. If you know one of them, you hopefully know the other one as well. This would be root 5 plus 1 over 4. And cosine 36 is greater than cosine 72 because cosine gets smaller in the first quadrant as the angle gets bigger. So this will be like that. And of course, we can cross cancel and now make a common denominator. 4 minus root 5 minus 1 divided by 2. And that should give you... 3 minus root 5 over 2. And you might be thinking, what kind of number is that? It's actually a really nice number. If you multiply the top and the bottom by 2, which is a little bit of algebraic manipulation, and then square root both sides, of course, we know that uh, this is going to be a positive answer, right? Because it's first quadrant. This will be uh, root 5 minus root 1, or just 1 squared in the numerator, and this will be a 2. Make sense? So it'll be root 5 minus 1 over 2. I don't know if you knew that ahead of time, but this is basically what u is, okay? That's u. And why do I need u? <laughs> okay, we need u because you will solve the problem, okay? 
you, the letter you. You can also solve the problem too, yourself. But I'm going to compare you to the arc length here. So arc AC, now this is a little different than the segment, so I'm going to use a different notation. What is the length of the arc segment? you got to remember the arc segment formula for radians. If you have a radius R and angle theta in radians, the arc length, which is denoted usually by S, is R theta. Hopefully you knew that. Think about it. If the angle is 2 pi the whole circle, the arc length is the circumference, which is 2 pi for the radius when the radius is 1. Makes sense? So when it's 1 radian, the circumference or the arc length is 1. Makes sense? So it will be R theta, but radius is 1, and theta is pi over 5, so AC, the arc length, will be pi over 5. This is where the comparison comes in, and that's just a beautiful, I think, setup, in my opinion. And here's the thing. Notice that this little bumpy uh, piece, is it called a segment, uh, a circular arc maybe? This arc is definitely longer than you, right? Why? Because it's bumpy, think about it. You have something like this, and then you have a bump. Of course, this is going to be a little longer. This is the shortest distance between the two points, right? Linearly, I mean. Therefore, arc length AC will be greater than U lengthwise. U is represents length. So, in other words, pi over 5 is greater than root 5 minus 1 over 2. And we were trying to find the larger number, right? The winner is pi over 5. Yay! And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then. Oh, wait a minute. I almost forgot to show you the numerical values. Yes, here's the numerical values. And you can see one more time that pi over 5 is the winner here by a little bit. They're pretty close because of the bump. And this really brings us to the end. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.